Hello, in this uh, video I thought I'd show you how I install uh, Rhapsody and I'm going to install Rhapsody 9. If we look in Google we can actually search, find information about uh, Rhapsody. Uh, the interesting thing is that in version 9 Rhapsody was renamed to drop the rational prefix and uh, prefix it instead with engineering system design. See uh, the documentation sent out has been updated you can see here. Now, whether this affects searches in the future, who knows? Anyway, I've downloaded the standard installer here. I'm just going to unzip the file. This will give me effectively a MSI installer with a setup XE. So I'll find the setup XE and then I'm going to run this as administrator. You can see I'd need admin privilege to do this. In 9 .0, you'll notice that actually the installer, and this is the 64 bit I'm installing here, the installer wizard had changed slightly. And just go through some of those changes. We'll see the license acceptance is very similar. So is this page, apart from the renaming. I'm going to install developer and we'll see that this also creates shortcuts for other additions. And I'm going to assume that this is C, C++. One of the things in 9.0 is that this will default to all users, which is kind of what we want. No, notice in this instance, it's trying to find where the compiler is and we don't have one. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually show you how I install the SIGWIN compiler in, in what I call a minimal configuration. And it's actually quite hard to find the right things to install for SIGWIN. And SIGWIN is, is a very large package of open source compiler and other support environment. And we can choose what we want to install by uh, running this setup XE. I tend to download to my local directory first, and then from that I'll, I'll install. And obviously that works if you've got quite a large deployment to do as well. So I need to select a mirror. Then if, if I um, filter this view to categories, uh, that will enable me to find the bits I want to install, which are part of the development strand here. So the first thing is the GCC compiler and the debugger. And then they're going to make It will then compute kind of the other bits that it needs to download as well. So having downloaded these things, uh, let's just run that again and uh, get it to install the Seguin environment. So I'm going to install from local directory this time. Select the defaults, remembers where it downloaded to. And then effectively I had to kind of go in and I'll just select the same elements again. But obviously this is the downloaded packages. That's how I do it. I guess there may be other ways of doing it, but this seems to work for a, a basic SIGWIN compiler. Okay, I don't need these, so I'll just click to finish. Right, uh, before going any further, I, I do check that the compiler installed correctly. So if I find the uh, SIGWIN directory where the uh, bin is, this is a 64-bit SIGWIN because I've got a 64-bit Rhapsody. Uh, it's possible to get the 32-bit SIGWIN working with a 64-bit Rhapsody, but... This just tends to make it easier because it's a fresh install. So I can see GCC works and make exists. So that's good. So I'm now going to repeat the installation process, but this time we'll see that Rhapsody detects. So I'm installing the compiler essentially before I install Rhapsody. Again, running an administrator. 
It's actually what the help says, do you? Accepting the license agreement, selecting the developer edition, even though I might be using the designer edition, selecting the C, C++ options, choose, find the development environment, will install for all users. But this time it's going to detect effectively that my Sigwin compiler is installed. So if you have Visual Studio installed, you might select that instead. Notice this folder up the top is where the framework is going to be compiled, so you can change that if you want. In terms of all the add-ons, um, I'll just install them all. If I don't have a license for them, then that won't affect the tool. So it just means that if I do choose to look at something, I can just get the, get the license for it and try it without having to reinstall. Normally, you'd select the license file here, but I'm, I'm not going to do that just to demonstrate kind of how we can configure the license that Rhapsody takes. So I won't select a license but I'll get it to run the installer. Notice here that one of the prefixes is Visual Studio 2017. Development team have actually upgraded their environment for this release. And although the user interface looks very similar, the chances are that future releases may actually exploit some of the new capabilities in their development environment. Okay, at this point I'll just click finish. And then if we go to where the shortcuts are created, I just want to point out that although I installed developer, I actually get shortcuts for architect for system and designer for systems engineers. Now, I didn't click to have a license. I haven't previously installed, so you see that it can't find a license. I just want to show the use of this system environment variable called Telelogic license file, which Rhapsody will use and also DAWs will use. So if you previously have Rhapsody installed, the chances are this, this system environment variable will already exist and be populated. Normally it might be populated with a server, for example, but you can also populate it with a node license file, if you like. That could be a semicolon separated list. It will look for the license in that order. So that's now Rhapsody installed, but I just want to show you this area in program data called user share and also the Rhapsody ini file. So this is quite important that this particular folder is actually read write. Now in your security installation, it may be that someone with admin privileges needs to make sure that everybody has modify access to this folder because it's also where Rhapsody will install the, the framework by default. So you can see here, I've got full control modify access to this. This is where the Rhapsody ini file is. Be really careful with the Rhapsody ini file. Don't open it when Rhapsody is open. And I always suggest before you do anything with it, create a copy. Because if it does get corrupted, it's difficult to restore. So here's the general section. So you can put user modifications here, like where you want Rhapsody to create default projects. So I usually do make some modifications here and I haven't, I haven't done all of those. You can also see this flag in here that's telling me that by default, the well, Rhapsody no longer ships the libraries for its framework code. This is which it links to uh, when you do a, a build in C and C++. So one of the implications of that is actually the first time you create a project and you try and build it with a compiler, it needs to build before that. And although that was a manual option that you had previously, it will do it automatically now. So let's just create a simple test model and I'm just gonna have a single class in this model and put a state machine onto that class so that I can stimulate the event-driven framework. So I'll just have two different states and then I'll get a asynchronous event to toggle between them. The way I tell Rhapsody what to build is through components and configurations. So I, if I look at the features for the configuration, I'm going to say, build me a main with an instance of this class. And then in the settings tab, I can say, compile it with the Sigwin compiler environment. 
as G, which is GCC essentially. And I'm going to turn on animation to make sure the animation libraries link. Now, remember the framework code is no longer shipped. So the first time I try and do a build, it will detect uh, that flag in the ini file and essentially invoke the build framework command. Now this this can take between five and ten minutes. So it's probably some, it's something you would do once post installation essentially once you've got your compiler set up and it's going to be compiling with the same settings that your application has been configured for. So this is the uh, build framework command in the code menu for example. There's a similar one in Rapsty System Design. It's just got a different name. Now it's the folder where this framework's being compiled is actually in the user share subfolder that's in that program data area, at least by default. Once the framework's compiled, then it goes into its normal compilation. So it's now actually compiling the class that we created. I've got animation enabled, so this is the console windows, the running application, and I get an animation toolbar that allows me to click go to run it, and I'll look at an animated state chart and just test that I can basically get it to toggle. So it gives me a very good confidence that everything is installed correctly. Final couple of things, just making sure certainly that I have the option to launch the gateway from the right click menu. Gateway is a kind of legacy tool that enables us to import requirements on Word and Excel if we want to. There's also uh, just another thing I'll check, which is that I've got the menu. If I select a class, you can see I can create a test architecture. So that, that menu is actually set up in the Rapsd ini file. I won't do it now though. So that's it really. That's the installation of Rapsi 9.0 with Sigwin compiler and all the options enabling both developer, system designer and system architect to be used. My name's Fraser Chubbin. I specialize in tool-based training in Rapsdy and also consulting around deployment of Rapsdy and the use of profiles and methods with systems and software engineering. If you do have any questions, then please don't hesitate to contact me. Here's my email address.